update. And if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to go ahead and just type them out as you think of them. Um, we're going to save some time at the end of the webinar. Again, we'll probably only do it for about 30 minutes. So we'll have the full hour to really kind of have some time to answer those questions. Um, I'll go ahead and answer them in the order that they are received. And again, if you can't stay for the full webinar or if you have to leave shortly before the uh, answer module happens, then we're going to go ahead and record this and then send it out to anyone that did register, anyone that did attend, um, as well as we will have it on our social media and on our YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's get started. Again, my name is Mike Garcia. I am your marketing manager here at iMatrix. I'm going to go ahead and go over the five deadly online marketing mistakes. Um, so a lot of businesses do this. Um, sometimes, you know, our own business has done it in the past. Um, other big businesses have done it as well. And again, these are fairly common, so don't be too hard on yourself if these are mistakes that you've made before or currently are making right now. So these are all easily corrected, and these are just some great tips and things that you can do um, to correct those mistakes. Um, but at least you'll know that maybe it is a mistake or maybe you might be able to tweak what you're currently doing um, to hopefully kind of go and put yourself on the right track. So. First things first, what we're going to go ahead and cover in today's agenda is how are you or how you are giving new clients the wrong first impression. Um, you want to make sure that you give them the right first impression. Again, that's going to be the very first interaction that they have of you, that they have of the business. You want to make sure that they understand what you guys are all about, what you guys can offer them, how you can help them, and you want to make sure that they come back and bring that residual um, revenue and that uh, back into your office and your business. And you want to make sure that they also refer people to your business. That's a big, big piece of it as well on the first impressions. A lot of times when people leave Yelp reviews, it's usually on the first experience or on the first impression of a business. A lot of times they will do it after a couple visits or after a couple times that they've been to that location, but a lot of times if it's good or bad, it will be on the first uh, impression that, that is made on them. So make sure that it's a good one. Uh, what conversion elements you have to have, um, how a consistency is killing your ranking. Again, you want to make sure that things are consistent. Um, big, big piece of that is NAP, which is your name, address, and phone number. And a lot of that has to do with directories and different ways that you're putting yourself out there for your online presence. Um, again, uh, we are dealing with a lot of Google robots and technology out there. So, you know, if anything isn't matching correctly, if your business name is spelled wrong one way, or maybe you have an LLC at the end of it on one directory and not the other, uh, maybe you just have the doctor's name instead of the business name on a directory instead of the other. Um, even if it's social media accounts, anything in general, it needs to be consistent. So there's a lot of consistency issues that happen that a lot of people don't realize, and it's a big key component into not only your ranking, but also your branding of your business. Uh, why focusing on social media or blog followers is the wrong metric for success. So this is a big one as well. A lot of people think, well, I need to have a lot more followers. Um, I need a lot more fans on my Facebook page, on my profile. The problem with that is that it doesn't really gauge anything about your business. I could probably grab a handful of people from not only Instagram, Twitter, Facebook that um, aren't necessarily a legit business, let alone a business that I would probably trust just because they might have you know thousands and thousands of followers doesn't really mean anything about the business. You could easily uh, buy followers, which is highly not recommended. Um, you could easily uh, cheat the system and find ways to get people to follow you somehow. Um, offering something but they have to follow you um, and then they don't really get anything in the end of it. Uh, there's a lot of different really shady tactics and, and what I consider black hat tactics to do uh, and then in this aspect and I really wouldn't use that as a, as a way to gauge any kind of success or any, any metric in general. Um, you really want to look at different things like Facebook insights where you can see like the engagement if they're sharing your, um, your posts, if they're commenting on your posts, liking your posts. Um, different things like that. Those are the kind of metrics that you actually want to gauge because even if you have only 100 followers, if they're being very engaging, by them engaging with you on social media, they're also uh, showing it to the, the people that are on their list, their fans, their friends and family uh, because of the fact of how uh, Facebook's algorithm works, how Facebook in general works. Anytime they comment on something, they share something, they like something of your business, it's going to show on their feed that they made that engagement with you. I see it all the time on my feed. I see a lot of the times where friends maybe like a post. Um, I get video uh, clips from friends because they like them and they didn't share it with me at all. It's just because I follow them and I follow the engagement that they have as well. So it's great free PR. It's a great way to actually gauge what's working and what's not. And it's probably the only metric you really need to work on uh, is the engagement level and not so much the number of followers that you have. Um, and then again, how long will it really take to see results? 
So a lot of times people think it's a real quick, you know, set it and forget it, or, you know, hey, I want to see results right away within the first 30 days, within the first week. Um, sometimes it depends on what you're doing, but it really depends on, um, you know, how long, what kind of metrics you're looking for. You know, if it's PPC, for instance, um, those tend to be a little bit sooner than normal, you know what I mean, because you're paying for a position, you're paying to be on the first page, to be somewhere in the top spot. You can see results for that a lot quicker. Now, the other level of results for that would be, okay, now that I'm on the first page of Google because of PPC, how is it that I um, basically, you know, what do I do from there? You know what I mean? Like, how do I get more people to come in? How do I get more people to convert on uh, the landing pages, those kind of things? And then that's another level of metrics that you need to look at. So there's a lot of different things that you need to see, you know, what metrics are you looking for? And then from there, you can gauge how long it will take to get those. If it's SEO, maybe you're not on the first, second, or third page, and you're not doing any PPC, but you really want to do some organic SEO, SEO takes a little bit more time. Think of it like a credit score. Um, it takes a little longer to kind of build it up than it does to drop off. Um, so you just have to kind of work on it, but once you have it up there, it's just more so in a maintenance mode, and you just have to maintain that ranking um, as long as you kind of follow the different criteria of, you know, uh, refreshed content, um, different, you know, different aspects of that, you know, social media, all these different things that you can do to help maintain your ranking once you get there. So. Given the first impression as a wrong one to clients is probably, again, one of the worst things that you can do. And it's not intentional. It's not something that you uh, try to do. Obviously, everyone tries to put their you know, uh, best first impression out there for their clients. But sometimes they just have a bad one. Um, bad reviews or no reviews at all, you know, that's one thing that you want to make sure that you know, if a client's looking you up on Yelp, if they're looking you up on Google, and they see that you don't have any reviews, or maybe they just see a nothing but bad reviews. That's something that you want to start to combat. You want to start to look at different ways that you can start getting good reviews, maybe to help push those bad reviews out. If you have no reviews at all, you want to make sure and start pushing reviews in general. Um, again, it's really easy, and the best thing I can recommend is, first and foremost, do not set up any kind of station or, or iPad or anything like that at your office and have people leave reviews there. Do not do that. That will not work 100%. Um, they do match the IP addresses of where these reviews are coming from, and if they're all coming from the same IP, um, they will be flagged and or removed, um, or you will have your, your listing closed um, completely. So you want to make sure that you don't do something like that, but you do want to encourage people to leave reviews by uh, via newsletter, um, email, iCard, anything like that that you have that you want to message out to them. But I always find the best way to do it is if they leave your or they're about to leave your office or if you give them a great experience, they come in for something and you help them out and they're happy about the service, that's the best time to ask them, hey, you know, do you mind, you know, leaving us a review on Google, um, on Yelp, those kind of things, even on Facebook, you know, social media kind of things, uh, because of the fact that, you know, they will have that good experience still fresh in their head and they'll be able to leave a good review. Now, it's not tricking them in any way, shape, or form. It's just you have to ask for it. It's the same thing with any sales position or any anything in general, um, you know, fast food places do it all the time. Do you want fries? Do you want to, um, you know, supersize that, you know, when they used to ask that. Uh, but you need to ask for it. That's the biggest thing. And the worst thing you're going to hear is no or I don't have time or I'll try to maybe later or whatnot. But if you don't ask, you're not going to get anything out of it. So I definitely recommend giving that to your front desk um, as yourself as the doctor, anyone in general, your staff members, just Make sure that they know how to ask it and not ask it in a way that sounds desperate or, hey, leave us a review, please. You know, do it in a way that's just, you know, very thankful for their service, uh, for their um, patronage, you know, that they're a great customer. Um, you know, you really love having them as a customer and you love to serve them and you want to make sure that they're happy and that their friends and family understand that, you know, this is a great place that they can come to as well and, you know, leave a review if, you, if they can. They really appreciate it. Now, if they want to leave a testimonial with you, that's fine too. Um, you obviously can't put those on those social media platforms like Yelp and, and uh, Google, uh, but you can also have those on your website. And so not only through different websites like Yelp and, and Angie's List um, will they look for reviews, but they're also going to be looking on your website to see if you have any testimonials or any kind of great kind of case study type things that people will be interested in uh, to kind of find out what your business is all about. The next thing, of course, if they do end up going on your website, is making sure that you don't have an outdated website. Now, we do offer services here to refresh your current website if you are an iMatrix uh, client of ours. We will make sure that it's up to date with the latest and greatest uh, themes and skins that we have, mobile responsive, all that stuff. And you want to make sure that you know your website has 
the best of the best. You want to make sure that your website is mobile responsive, um, that it's able to be viewed on mobile and tablets and desktop and all those different uh, mediums. You want to also make sure that your social media is clear all around your, um, your website, very, very top if you can. It's the best place above the fold. Um, you also want to make sure that everything's clear and concise and that all of your information is updated, whether it's your equipment that you have pictures of or pages of, the different techniques and services that you offer, even your staff photos and anything in general about the practice and the staff itself, you want to make sure it's up to date. Just make sure everything is, is prime and looks great because it's the first impression, again, that they're going to have of your business um, is your website. They're going to also look at making sure that you know, everything across the board is uh, correct, you know, office hours, um, phone number, those kind of things. You know, if it's not visible and it's not um, easily accessible to them, they're going to move on to the next website. You need to make sure all that stuff is good to go, and that way it's as easy as possible for them to schedule an appointment with you. And the next one is basically the wrong you. Often businesses really use their site to say why they're the best, um, this verbiage really needs to be changed to focus on the you as a visitor. So what's the value proposition your business can offer that will be the solution to their needs? To bluntly kind of put it, no one really cares about the logo. You know, obviously people, you know, you care as a business owner, you want to talk about the logo and how nice this looks and how nice that looks. You know, all the, the time, effort, and money that you spent into the practice and the website and everything else. But let it basically be kind of like an accent of the website. Don't let it overpower or compete with the site's messaging or its headlines. You want to make sure that the main focus of the website is to convert visitors. You want to have visitors uh, come onto the, uh, to the website, fill out a form, or call the phone number that's there, um, you know, schedule an appointment, whatever it may be. But if it's so overcrowded by all of the other interests that maybe you might have on there, um, you know, maybe let's say you're a chiropractor to the stars, okay, or uh, maybe you do work with uh, celebrities or whatnot. That's great. That's awesome. I mean, I think that's, that's an amazing thing uh, to promote on your website, you know, that you're a trusted source. I get that. You just want to make sure that the other areas are easily visible and probably overpower those, you know, other things a little bit more. Because you can say how great your practice is. You can say how awesome the service is, how many great high-profile clients you have, whatever it may be. But if all that overpowers the overall messaging and the call to actions and the phone numbers, how are these people, these people are going to see how great you are, but they're not going to have a way to reach you or get a hold of you. And it kind of almost shoots yourself in the foot. So you just want to make sure that you are promoting it in the best way possible, but at the same time, you have these things easily being the strongest piece on your website. All the call to actions, phone number, um, any page in general has a special offer. Um, anything in general that you can think of. Um, scheduling an appointment, all of that needs to be easily accessible without being overcrowded by everything else that's on there. The next is, of course, the conversion elements that you have to have. A strong call to action. Again, that's one thing I was mentioning. A strong call to action is something that you want to make sure that is uh, easily accessible. You want to make sure that if someone is inquiring about uh, a particular service that you have an offer for, that you have all the ins and outs covered, um, is insurance um, you know, accepted. Um, you know, do I need to schedule an appointment first? Um, what do I need to fill out before in order to make, you know, take uh, advantage of this offer? All these different things that you need to kind of look at in order to make sure that it's as easy as possible for the client. Keep in mind, people are looking at these websites on their phone. People are looking at your business through their, their laptop, their tablet, whatever it may be. Majority of people are looking at them through mobile devices. That usually means that they're on the go or they're taking a quick five minutes uh, of a break somewhere doing something to take a look at this. Maybe they're walking as they're looking on their phone. Who knows? Um, not a lot of people are on their phone looking at these type of things, um, sitting down comfortably or at home comfortably. Now, some people do, but a lot of times, for me especially, if I'm at home, I'd rather be on my laptop or my desktop because it's, easily, it's easier for me to access a lot of different things. Um, and so keep that in mind, that you want to make sure things are are available, but they also give everyone uh, the easiest way of scheduling an appointment, you know, and, and making sure that they have all the info that they need. The right color use. Now, this is important. I know a lot of people think maybe it's not, but you want to make sure that you use the correct colors that represent the feeling and look that you want to convey. You know, car uh, colors carry different types of emotions. Keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to use a great example that we used um, for a dental client a long time ago. Um, the dental industry in general, they aren't really too, uh, they don't really like the color red. 
for a lot of different things. And in the beginning, I really didn't know why. I was kind of trying to figure out, well, what's wrong with red? I don't get it. You know, I, I, I can maybe see how it's a little hard on the eyes sometimes, whatnot. To them, it's because red conveys blood. And a lot of times people uh, think of the dentist as a bad thing. I mean, a lot of people don't like to go to the dentist, even though they have to. Um, but they think because, you know, pain, um, drills, cavities, you know, blood, needles, all these different things that they kind of associate with it. So it makes perfect sense why a lot of dentists don't want to use red as a color in their branding or in their website. It makes perfect sense. Um, so different things like that carry different emotions, different thoughts. Think of that when you're branding your business. If your business is already branded, that's great, but make sure it's consistent across the board. You want to make sure that you have the color scheme the same with your logo. That's the same, you know, if your office is the same. You also want to make sure that, you know, different uh, things on your website have the same color scheme. Your social media banners, everything with social media in general, all that stuff needs to be consistent, but you need to make sure it's the right message that you're kind of trying to convey. If they're very, very bright, Mardi Gras style colors, People might not take it too seriously because they might think, well, what's going on with this site? It's a little clown-esque, you know, like they, they don't really know what's going on with it. So just kind of think of that when you're thinking of the branding and you're thinking of the website. It really does convey a specific message to certain people. Relevant images is also a great piece of it as well. You want to make sure that, you know, pictures and video are probably the second most attractive aspect on a site. Um, if faces are shown, that's great as well, but you want to make sure that all your images count. If you're going to have certain services on there and you have certain images, you need to make sure that the images convey something with that specific service. If you're talking about grooming your dog or your pet, maybe have some pictures of grooming or like pets that need grooming of some sort. Um, same thing goes for chiropractic. You know, you want to talk about um, car accident injury or whiplash. Maybe you have a picture of someone that's kind of holding their neck. Different things like that. Things that we use here at iMatrix for our clients, we make sure that they are relevant images to that specific page. Um, not only that, you also want to make sure that if you have any images of the practice, you have uh, images that look great, clean, professional of the different waiting areas, um, the actual areas where you'll be working on the client, um, maybe the front desk, the outside area of the business, that way they can see what it looks like if they're looking for it, if it's in a plaza, that kind of thing. Um, so make sure that they're relevant to whatever you're using that image for. Don't just slap on an image because you think it might look good. It needs to be relevant. Um, and then, of course, the last one here would be the uh, organized content. Use text that conveys your message clearly. Um, keep it to the point. Don't, don't really overclutter the, the page just to fill up space. You want to make sure that you keep it short and simple. Don't have a long 1,000, 2,000 uh, word page of some specific service or topic. If you have something that long, you need to possibly break it up into different things. I'm going to use uh, Whiplash again as, an, as a great example because I see this a lot. Um, and we, we usually advise against it. We advise actually different ways of doing it uh, for our clients. So if you have, let's say you, you treat car accident injury. Okay, you have car accident injury page. Now you could easily put different things on there uh, explaining different injuries, you know, uh, back pain, uh, whiplash, different things like that. You can put all that stuff on that one single page. But if that page is becoming way too long and it's just, it ends up being a book for someone, they're not going to sit there and read the whole thing. They're really not. Um, so what you need to do is break it up. Maybe break it up from a, a car accident injury page and then have another page on whiplash, another page on uh, back pain, anything in general that you can think of that you can segment into different pages because more com uh, content uh, is better for ranking. Uh, content is king still. And as long as it's relevant to what you offer and what you're looking for to, uh, to be searched for on uh, Google um, and SEO in general, then it's going to work for you. It's going to be great. So you want to make sure, and you can link between the pages as well, it's, it's actually a lot better way of doing it. Now if you have a page that doesn't have a lot of content, that's fine. You can maybe even toss an image in there to kind of help boost a little bit more of the real estate in that page. That's perfectly fine. But I do want to recommend that you just don't over clutter things and you want to make sure that you don't have an uh, insane navigation bar. And by that I mean having 20, 30 different tabs on a navigation bar. It becomes way too overwhelming for clients, um, for customers. People don't like to go onto a website where they feel like it's a needle in a haystack. They, it just, it's, it's almost like a Costco uh, wholesale type of website where it's just got everything you can think of. And that can be good because you offer a lot of services, but it just needs to be organized in a way that's, that's edible chunks that people can can go towards 
what service they need and if they need something particular for that service, again, like I mentioned, car accident injury, uh, then you can go through the whole line of all the different pages under that one tab, but consolidate it to where it's just minimal amount of tabs as possible, and then you can add more pages within there. Just keep it organized. Inconsistency is killing your ranking, okay? So expert status, right? Consistent posting sets you up as an expert. You want to make sure that when you post certain things on social media, um, when you're posting blogs, different things like that, it shows you as being the go-to person. The worst thing I can see, and I say this in a lot of different webinars, but again, it still happens, and it's it's totally fine. It's not it's not one of those things where it's, you know common sense. Hey, why are you doing it? It's just more so it it makes sense why certain people do it, and it's just a no no. You want to make sure not to do it, and that is linking to other sites for information that you should be the expert on. So number one biggest no no is linking to WebMD or Wikipedia or anything of the sort. I would not want to go to a business and find a page that talks about um, LASIK, let's just say, for my eyes. Let's say I need to get LASIK done on my eyes. Um, and I wouldn't want to go to a website that has a page on it when it has a little bit of a paragraph about it, and then it basically links to Wikipedia or WebMD or any of those websites that explains what LASIK is and what it does. Because that has no relevancy to you or your practice. It might have relevancy to the technique itself, but how does that relate to what your practice is going to do and what the process is for your practice and how you guys do it. They want to come across, or you want to come across as the expert and basically the go-to person for any eye care needs, any chiropractic, any uh, veterinary needs, anything in general that you do in your practice, you want to be the expert. You don't want to link someone to some other website to get the answer because that doesn't mean that they're going to come back to you. That means that they're going to go somewhere else and now that they're off your website, they're off your website. As soon as you link them out of your website, they're going to be gone unless you link them to something relevant to your website like a social media page about your website or a YouTube channel about your website. It's still about your website. But as soon as you link them off to another website, they're gone. You're, you, you've just lost it. So you want to make sure that you don't do things like that. You want to make sure that you are considered the expert and not someone else. New and improved. You want to make sure that new content signals your site uh, is new and improved. You want to make sure that you know, if you have a special offer that it's promoted in the right way, you can promote it on social media, uh, put it on your website if you have a landing page for it as well, you know, post it across Twitter, Facebook, those kind of things, maybe send it out to your clients, hey, it's Pet Dental Month, or hey, we're doing this for this, uh, this end of this month, you know, come check it out. Anything in general, you want to make sure and let them know that it's new and it's improved. If you have a new website or maybe some new equipment, um, a new building that you move to, different things like that, I know a lot of clients like to do that, they'll promote it to make sure that everyone knows what the new business is or the new building is and also letting them know, hey, we've got new equipment, um, everything's brand new, under new ownership, whatever it may be that's new, you want to make sure that you post it so that everyone knows and you want to make sure you think of it as a marathon. It's not a sprint. So all these things do take a little bit of time. Don't push it out there to where you think people need to um, come in that same day or come in this weekend only kind of thing. If you have an offer or a special that you want to promote, make sure you try to at least give people some time Promote it at least you know within that month, beginning of the month, or a month in advance if you can. Um, people need to kind of readjust their schedules if they want to take advantage of certain sales or offers um, or anything new in general. You want to make sure and give them enough time to be able to kind of uh, make that decision or make room for it as well. Again, more content equals better chances. Again, the content is king when it comes to SEO. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough content pages because a lot of times people don't realize that when someone's searching for a business, or searching in general for anything, um, it doesn't just pull up your website. It pulls up your home page. It pulls up the individual pages of your website. It can pull up all these different service pages. Again, using the chiropractic uh, page as an example, someone searching for a car accident injury, they have the ability, if you have it segmented and organized correctly, they have the ability to pull up your home page, the car accident injury page, the whiplash page. I mean, every single page you can think of that's relevant to that search, it has the capability of being pulled up. So the more pages you have, the more real estate you'll have on the search engine results page. There might be 10 results on a page at any given time, and you might be dominating five or six of those pages. So even if you aren't number one on Google, maybe you're number two, or even if, let's say, you're number four, five, six, seven, and eight, the fact that you own most of the real estate on that page doesn't matter that you're not number one. The fact is that you and your practice are the best site or the best business for this particular situation. If someone's searching for something, I would rather go to one website that has all these different pages about that service 
than just one website in general. Even if that website's number one, I'd rather go to someone else that you know is probably a little more in tune to what I need. So make sure you have uh, content available. And if you can't think of any content, just think of the different services that you offer. I guarantee uh, people will offer more than five services. You know, if you have at least uh, ten services or whatnot, or even more, um, you can put that in some content pages and explain that. Maybe even segment it a little bit further from there, um, and that'll help you out a lot. Also, putting some FAQ, uh, you know, questions on each page is a great way of doing it because that is uh, helping out with uh, Google, one of Google's latest uh, algorithms, where people like to ask questions a lot because of Siri. Uh, because of Cortana, Google uh, Now, all those different things that we have as mobile assistants, people like to use those and they like to um, ask questions as opposed to keywords. So Google is looking at that in their algorithm when you have certain questions. So think of that as well when you're doing content. Maybe a, a frequently asked question that happens about a certain content page, um, again, is insurance accepted kind of thing. Whatever it may be that you think will work uh, for that particular uh, page, Go ahead and put a little question towards the bottom or the top, and then put a little answer next to it as well. That way, people can understand, oh, OK, great. Maybe it even answers their question as they're on the page, but it also does help with your uh, search engine results because Google does look at those different question, more human-like type of uh, uh, in, uh, queries through uh, Google as opposed to people searching for keywords. Keywords are still beneficial in your content, but people nowadays aren't always just searching based off keywords. They are searching more in phrases and more human-like language, um, especially in questions when they're using their mobile device. So keep that in mind when you're doing that as well. Um, NAP consistency, we kind of went over this a little bit. Your name, address, and phone number is key. You want to make sure that that is consistent across the board. Um, we, do, we do make sure to make sure uh, that all, uh, we make sure to make sure um, that all of that stuff is consistent here at iMatrix. If you have any questions, definitely let us know. We can help steer you in the right path um, if you have questions about your current NAP status. Um, NAP, again, is anything and everything from your name, address, phone number on your website, your social media platforms, directories from Google to Yelp to um, Angie's List, um, to anything and, and everything that you can think of that your name and your business uh, is out there. You want to make sure it's consistent. Um, easiest way of doing that, you could uh, go to getlisted.org, you can go to Yex, any of those things. But keep in mind that if you do go to one of those websites, for the most part, they will make it free to at least show you what's inconsistent out there. But they will also try to offer you service to fix it. Now, I recommend uh, not going that route just because you can do it yourself for free. Um, and usually if you enroll in something like that, it's an ongoing recurring charge, different things like that. So it really depends on what you want to do with it. But if you don't have the time to do it, just let us know. We can look into um, helping you out that way and seeing what uh, might be the best fit for you. But keep in mind that is the most important piece, one of the most important pieces to your SEO and getting your business found online is making sure you have NAP consistency, making sure that it is correct all the way down to the letter. You want to make sure that if you have, um, you know, your business name has, you know, DC at the end of it, or like I said, LLC or anything in general, incorporated, whatever it may be, that has to be consistent across the board. The phone number needs to be consistent across the board. Um, the address, whether it's spelled out road or not, or if, it, if it's got a unit number or anything in general like that, you want to make sure all that stuff is correct and consistent. So it might be tedious, but at, in the long run, once you get it fixed and it's done, then it's pretty much set it and forget it at that point. Um, unless you have new directories that you get into, you want to make sure that they're also consistent. Um, but make sure that those are all correct across the board. Number of followers is the wrong metric. Now, this one's an interesting one because a lot of people don't quite get it. They think, oh, I need to have a lot more fans, a lot more people uh, on my social media profiles, or at least liking them. Um, it's going to help out with my ranking. It's not. It's not at all. Um, the follower amount is, is really irrelevant to anything. I mean, I have friends that have thousands of followers, and I really wonder, you know, you really know all of those people. You know, same thing with businesses. They might have businesses that have, uh, you know, over a thousand, five thousand, however many followers, but do they really? You know, are those all clients of theirs? Um, now, you want to make sure that when you're looking at these different metrics, that you look at the right, correct metrics. You want to make sure that you look at different things like engagement. You want to make sure that you look at different things like, um, you know, who's sharing your content, who's liking it, who's commenting on it, are they leaving reviews for you on social media? These are all the different signals that you really need to look at. Um, these are the things that are going to, again, like I mentioned, have people sharing your content with their friends and family, and then that might be potential business to you. 
That might be something where you know you have all these potential prospects, but you have no way of reaching them. Well, social media is a great way to do it. So you want to see who's sharing your content, what content, what type of content is being shared, what type of content is being engaged with, and uh, liked and commented on, and that kind of thing. Um, those are the metrics that you definitely want to keep in mind. Social links content that uh, that's shared via links across social media helps search engines really understand how to rank your website, um, especially for specific keyword phrases. You know, Google crawls social uh, media websites for data. Links placed in content and profiles are also seen as credible. And you want to make sure that you have social media links in everything that you promote out there, whether it's an email to your clients or a newsletter or iCard. Um, even if you know you have some kind of special offer on your uh, website that maybe you want to have people share with their friends and family to help get you more business, make sure you have the ability to have your social media links all linked up on the website. I would prefer. Uh, I would actually recommend saying the top upper fold of your website is a great place to have it as well. Um, but you want to make sure that it's easily accessible and that they all are linkable um, to the correct pages because sometimes people don't realize that their button isn't linked on their website. So make sure that that is. Um, content creation and distribution. A lot of social media platforms are offering more vessels for content creation um, and distribution than they really ever have before. Um, platforms, different platforms like Periscope, Vine, um, are really designed solely to function in concert with social media. Um, you know, if you have anything like that, you want to make sure that you are touching all avenues that you can, you know, Instagram, um, Pinterest, anything in general that you think would help to reach out to your audience out there, um, definitely look into it. Um, you know, if you want to post some things where you can post the same exact content across all the uh, different uh, social media platforms, that's fine too. Um, not everyone's going to check your profile on every single platform, but they might uh, check their Twitter and see that you're on there and see it, or someone might see you know their Facebook and not their other platforms and be like, oh, cool. You want to make sure that you have it across the board. Um, don't just pay attention to Facebook. Don't just give love to Google Plus or or Twitter. You want to make sure that you try to do as many as you can. And I would say the top three you definitely want to do is Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Um, Pinterest, Instagram, those are all still out there. You know, Snapchat, all these different uh, platforms that are out there. It really just depends on the way that you intend on using it. Currently, with iMatrix, we only um, support Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Of course, we're looking into different platforms down the line. Uh, but again, we have to just make sure that it is something that is um, able to be catered to our different industries that we offer. So again, if you're a chiropractor, maybe you can put different stretches or whatnot, um, you know, stretch of the day on, on Snapchat or, uh, you know, different techniques or whatnot. Um, you offer supplements, you know, that kind of thing, you put it on um, Instagram. Uh, maybe it's uh, different dog food or different uh, medications that you want to promote or whatnot. You can do it on different social media platforms as well. The list goes on. There's different ways of doing it. It's just make sure that you're consistent with it and make sure that you have the content pushed out on all mediums if you're going to do that. And then social channels is search engines. Basically, people treat social media platforms exa almost exactly like they do search engines. Twitter gets more than 19 billion searches per month, and Facebook gets more than a billion per day. I mean, it's one of those things where if you're not on these platforms, you need to be. They're free. All it really takes is time. Um, and you know, if you aren't really sure how to do it, let us know. We are experts at this kind of stuff. I mean, we know exactly the trends and the time of day that needs to go out, the days of the week that they need to go out for the best engagement, all these different things that you need to know. Let us know. We can help you out. Uh, but you want to make sure that you are on all these social channels. Um, YouTube is considered a social channel. Google owns YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. People don't realize that. They wonder why. Well, because people like to search videos a lot more than they want to search an article. Um, when they're looking for a service, though, like yourselves, they're going to search on Google still, but they might even search on YouTube uh, to find some different videos that way. Um, a lot of times, videos from YouTube will also show on the search results page as well. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of all these different social channels. Um, they get used a lot. Now is the age of social media, and it still will be for quite some time, I'm sure. Now, a big thing that a lot of people have questions about is how long is it really going to take to see all these results? Well, don't really expect them overnight. They're not going to happen. <laughs> um, you know, no matter what, even if you're doing PPC, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, maybe in a first week, two weeks, whatever it may be, who knows, first month, but it's not going to be overnight. So you want to make sure that you keep your expectations um, real. Um, keep them high, but keep them real. And make sure that, you know, if you're looking for something that you are looking for the right results that you want and, um, and the right metrics as well. Now, six months is usually the best bet for noticeable results. 
not only because that's when you first see the initial results, but it gives you enough time to kind of look at the overall data and really kind of do a cross-reference and comparison of which, what each month is offering and, and really kind of overall um, a, a great way of seeing, you know, how the service is working or what you're expecting, you know, the results from what you're expecting. Six months is a great, great time to see that stuff. Twelve months, though, however, is where you get the really impactful changes. That's where you get to see the longevity of it. You get to really see the different trends throughout the year. Um, Twelve months is the best prime way of seeing results. A lot of times when we do results here, we do year-over-year -year type of results. And, and how did we do last year compared to this year? We do month-over-month -month as well. Um, and quarterly and all these other things. But you want to make sure that, you know, if you're looking for really impactful stuff, you need to give it a little bit of time to kind of marinate. That way you can pull the best data as possible and make the best decision as possible. And that's it. That's the five uh, mistakes and how to kind of overcome them. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and type them through. Again, if you have any questions at all, we offer multiple services to help out with your business. Um, a lot of it has to, be with, uh, has to do with time management. You know, if you just don't have the time to do it, Give us a call. We'll give you a free consultation, you know, a free evaluation of your current efforts, your current website. Um, you can call at 800-462-8749 or go ahead and visit us at imatrix.com. Again, we'll give you that free uh, website evaluation. Just let them know that you uh, attended this webinar and the questions that you have pertain to this webinar. Um, we'll make sure that they uh, know that and that they can go ahead and help you out in any way possible. Um, so again, I'll open up the floor to some questions. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and send them out. Um, again, we're going to have this, this is recorded, we're going to have this sent out via email, as well as it will be on our social media channels, um, as well as on uh, YouTube, of course, which is a social media channel, but uh, in general, we'll have it on YouTube here shortly. So um, feel free to go ahead and ask away, and I'll go ahead and leave it open for a couple minutes. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. All right, got a couple questions here. Awesome. So let's see. Is email marketing something that you find effective? How do you target if so? Yes, email marketing is extremely effective, especially coming from a marketer. Um, I We use it, obviously, um, to, to market out to our current clients and prospects, but definitely as a business, a small business, um, I do think that if you do email out, make sure you're emailing about something uh, specific. Um, I wouldn't just spam people different random articles of information. Um, if it has something that they can take advantage of, like an offer, definitely. I think that's great. Um, I would not email them too often. I would probably say, you know, if you have a certain offer of the month, you can email that out to your clients to let them know, hey, this is the month, um, this is the June offer that we have, or whatever it may be. And um, we do actually have certain clients that do things like that. They have different monthly offers that they will email out to their clients. Um, so I do definitely think that it is uh, very um, successful and if you're looking to see how you segment it out um, it really just depends on how you have the capability to segment it out on your end um, you know if you have certain clients that are only let's say you have yoga clients you know and they just do yoga or maybe massage therapy you know if you have specific offers for those each individual services maybe just send them out to those people um, that's the only way I can think of on your end uh, that you'd be able to really segment it out depending on what type of service that you're offering any kind of uh, special offer on, or if you have an event happening. If it's an event and you just want to have everyone included, I would just email it out to everyone. But make sure that if you are emailing it out on your end um, via you know, Gmail or any other way, make sure that you do it in a way that you can blind, you know, BCC everyone, that way you don't give out everyone's email address, that kind of thing. Just make sure you do it uh, correctly, that way it's, it's private so that everyone gets it uh, individually. How often should you change your website design? Good question. So. Changing your website design, really, it's one of those things where I wouldn't do it too often. It's very confusing to people when they come to your website one month and then the next month it's completely different. Um, I would honestly say, you know, maybe every six months or so. It depends. If your website's one of those where it's not mobile responsive, I definitely recommend uh, changing it immediately. Um, you actually could get penalized from Google if your website is not mobile uh, responsive uh, because of the way that their new algorithm works. So they, call, they actually called it. Um, not to scare anybody, but they actually called it mobile get-in um, because everyone was freaking out about, you know, is my mobile site or is my so, uh, site mobile? Is it responsive at all? 
Um, if not, it's going to drop ranking. What's going to happen? So that's one thing that you definitely want to do is make sure that you have a mobile responsive website that is at least clean and it's it's updated. Those kind of things. Um, if all that is taken care of, then as far as you know, changing it and updating it, I'd say maybe once every six months if you if you want to. Um, you can even do it sooner if you like, but I recommend don't do it every month. That's definitely very difficult. I mean, you could even do it once a year. It just really depends on on what your current website is uh, is is performing right now. I would definitely look at it uh, from an analytics standpoint. See how many visitors you have. If there's any drop off. Um, if you have a lot of people dropping off and bouncing from your website from the very first page, that's a clear indicator that it's just not providing what they need. Does your website currently have uh, a specific area that could provide the call to action um, very clearly and concise? Um, is it available? Is it visible in the upper fold? Those kind of things. These are all the different questions that you need to ask about your current website in order to find out, you know, is this, is this working for me right now as far as my current theme or my current skin? Um, if all of that is working and your website is working fine for you, you don't have an issue with it, you can keep that same theme and same skin for the next six months, a year, year and a half, however long you think it's going to perform well for you. Um, it's not something that you have to change. The content is the only thing that you need to keep updated and consistent. That's the real uh, piece of what Google is really interested in, not too much the design part of it, um, but more so the content part. Great questions coming here. Let me kind of scroll up. Okay, so all seems a bit overwhelming. What's the best way to get started? I will be completely honest. If you want to go ahead and give us a call, we can help you out by giving you a evaluation of kind of what your current business needs are, what you're looking for, what your real intention is for the business and, and the website in general. If you're just looking to help increase your social media presence, we can definitely help you out with that. If you really want to uh, get your ranking up because you're not on the first, second, or third page, we can definitely help you out with that. And if it's something where you really want to start targeting specific geo-targeted areas, PPC might be the best bet for you as well. It does seem a little overwhelming. There's a lot of info. Um, as you can see with each one of these different icons, there's a different level of service that we offer, from reputation management to social media management um, to PPC and overall advanced SEO. We do pretty much everything for your business. So if you have questions that's a little overwhelming, definitely give us a call. Um, we'll help you out with that. And um, if you have uh, more questions that you want to have more in-depth uh, information on, I can have someone reach out to you personally, and that way we can help you out. Um, let's see. Can you be on Facebook just business-wise? So that question I think is coming off because uh, when you create a business profile, you have to actually attach it to a personal profile. You can be on Facebook just business-wise. You don't have to have a, a personal profile on Facebook. Um, you do, however, have to have it attached to a personal profile. So the way I have it is I actually have my personal, I have a work uh, Facebook profile as well that I, I kind of use, don't really use too often. We have our own corporate Facebook uh, profiles, but since I'm an admin on those profiles, either my uh, work personal or my actual personal needs to be an admin of it and needs to like the page, then be an admin of it. But it doesn't have any tie whatsoever to my personal page. The only thing that happens on my, my own back end of my personal uh, Facebook is that I get notifications about things that are happening with the business profile. Um, that's it. It doesn't do anything on my profile front end. When I post on the business end, it doesn't do anything uh, showing me pro posting on there. It actually gives you the option to post as the business or log in as the business or yourself. Um, so you do need to have it tied into a personal profile somewhere. But again, it doesn't have any tie-in. It doesn't, doesn't mix up anything with the messaging at all. Is it still a no-no to copy and paste versus retyping information? Now, that's a good question because a lot of people don't understand what this means and, and really kind of what uh, happens with it. So just so everyone knows, uh, when you type something in Word, okay, a lot of times people use Microsoft Word and they don't quite understand, you know, well, why can't I just copy and paste it into a WYSIWYG editor? If people don't know what WYSIWYG is. It basically stands for what you see is what you get. That's what WYSIWYG stands for. And that's usually what a content editor is on a website. Specifically, you type something, you put something in there, what you see is what you're going to get kind of thing, right? Well, the problem is that with Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, it adds a bunch of MSO tags, Microsoft Office tags, in the back end of it because there's different formatting, there's different things happening in, in Microsoft Office. It's all proprietary stuff. You copy and paste it into a WYSIWYG editor, the back end of it ends up showing all this crazy code happening a lot of the times. Um, that's bad, one, because of the fact that it causes such a clutter for the Google bots to roam around and scan your website. 
And two, it causes a lot of formatting issues because it ends up being formatted very weird and you can't really format the other stuff around it. It just becomes a big, big issue. Um, so the best thing that you can do is copy it and paste it into a regular notepad editor if you have one. Um, and then you can recopy it and paste it into the WYSIWYG editor. What that does, that completely strips all the different backend MSO tags and codes and all this other stuff and just leaves the raw content. Um, that's one way of doing it. And of course, the long way would be to type it out, but that's a that's very long way. So I would say the easiest way is to copy paste it into an editor, uh, a different editor, not Microsoft Word, just like a regular notepad, plain notepad, and then copy and pasting it into the editor itself. Um, Great question, by the way. It's, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie, definitely. Um, if we decide to add one or more of the secondary social media channels, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, to our website, can iMatrix support the logo slash link insertion? Uh, let me see, scroll down a little bit. Even if you don't yet support content placement and refreshing. Yes, definitely. Any link at all, at all, any link in general that you have on your website, we will link it up to that profile. That That's that's simple. That's easy. As far as logos matching, we do have different logos for like Pinterest and um, Instagram, even though we don't support uh, it as far as the service end of it, um, we will support the fact of linking that up on your website. Anything in general that you want to link on your website, we will help you out with. Um, even if it's an icon that we have uh, designed specifically on our end, like Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus that we personally designed, um, we will try to design it to, to match that. If not, and we just can't you know, do it or we don't have it or maybe you don't want it or whatever, it's easy. We just pop it on there. We link it up to that website. So yeah, we definitely will do that for you. Um, and YouTube, we do service. Um, it's just we don't we don't post it in our social media service. That's more in our media service. So, uh, but yeah, we do service uh, YouTube. But yeah, Pinterest, Snapchat, um, Instagram, we will help you out with those icons and linking them up as well uh, as putting them on your website. Another question, great question. When having a page on the website, you refer to content being picked up by Google. As consultants to uh, specify Kairos, what's the best way to get content out there, especially when targeting a specific group? Hmm. So you're a consultant uh, trying to specify different Kairos uh, I'm taking. Uh, what's the best way to get the content out there, especially when it's targeting a specific group? One way that you can do it, obviously, is a lot of people don't realize when you have a page of content, you can actually post that page on Google+. Plus on Facebook, different social media platforms, uh, maybe even post it in an email out when you're emailing out, doing some kind of uh, email campaign or whatnot. That's honestly the best way that you can get that out there. Um, and when you actually put it on social media like Google+, Plus, Google actually will pick it up pretty quick. Um, they'll actually pick it up uh, fairly quick to index it to make sure it starts to get ranked. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you're looking to get ranked on, that you have a specific page about that. Because once you start uh, ranking on those individual segments, when someone's searching for something, again, it adds into that real estate issue, or not issue, that real estate situation where you can have three, four, five different pages on the first page as opposed to just one page on the first page. Okay. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. I think it did. Uh, if not, let me know. It can kind of go a little more in depth on that. When putting a video together, should you do a walkthrough with uh, no one in the facility to having someone just demonstrate it? something in each area of the practice. Either, really honestly, it's up to you. Um, I actually do think it's great if you want to have someone kind of demonstrating, you know, a little thing on like, you know, this is how this equipment is used or whatnot. That's great. Personally, I mean, if you really want to go uh, be awesome with it, I would say do it with nobody there. Uh, maybe do it where it's just empty. You know, maybe you can even have it to where it looks like they're kind of mock-up clients, you know, they're sitting there talking to each other, laughing, you know, whatever it may be. But I would probably do one video that way, and then if you have a YouTube channel and you want to have separate individual videos, um, I always recommend doing great videos where you can have someone demonstrating how to do something. Um, that's one video, maybe demonstrating, you know, this is how you do a stretch this way. This is a yoga pose. This is um, the proper way to, uh, you know, uh, give medicine to your, your cat or your dog, how to, how to brush your cat's teeth. You know, that's always a great one. Um, how to properly put eye drops in, you know, how to clean your contacts. There's so many different things that you can do that you can actually do videos and demonstrate someone doing something for each different area of the practice, and that's great content. That's stuff that you can put on uh, the website on that particular page, keep in mind. So there's a lot of great things that you can do. Let's say you have a website page on one particular service. This, in my opinion, is the best perfect way of doing a page. You have a particular service. Uh, let's say it is a veterinary page on, again, how to brush your cat's teeth. 
Okay, you have a content page, you have an image that relates to that uh, particular content, you have a, a question and an answer, so a little FAQ piece in there, you know, how to, or what's the best way to do it? Well, here's the best way to do it, blah, blah, blah. Um, or, you know, is using human toothpaste bad for cats? You know, and then you have an answer to it, that kind of thing. Um, and then also in the content, you have a video demonstrating how to do, uh, how to give your, uh, brush your, your cat's teeth. That's a perfect page right there. That has so much content and so much value to it that Google's gonna look at that and the longer it's up there and the more visitors you get, easier it's gonna be to pop that on the first page and Google's gonna recognize that as being extremely relevant. So yeah, I definitely encourage having a lot of different videos demonstrating and as well as you know a video maybe just not having the staff there just to show a virtual tour of the office. I recommend all of them. I would say all the above if you can. If you only wanna do one though, um, I would say probably you know having the staff there but again, you want to make sure that if you do have staff there, that it's not, um, just be careful because, you know, you might have staff change, you know, um, let go, uh, new staff, different things like that. And it might kind of be awkward. You might have to re-record them, that kind of thing. So, great, great question. Yes, I actually agree. So, then it's best to use staff instead of pulling out a video from YouTube that is done by someone other than, uh, someone other, some other professional. Um, if it's, if it's a professional doing it for your business, that's great. If you're talking about grabbing videos of other professionals doing it, like let's say you, you again, I'm gonna use an example, you wanna show uh, how to do a certain stretch. I recommend showing the clients how to do that stretch, not linking to a video showing how to do that stretch. Because again, then it goes back into that content piece where you're linking to other websites for information as opposed to being the one expert that gives the information. So you want to make sure that you guys are the ones that are doing it and not linking to another professional. If it's a professional company doing it for you, that's fine, but you want to make sure that it's still you guys doing the stretch or doing the demonstration or whatnot. Um, if there's no video of a demonstration, and for instance, you know, like for us, we have a, a corporate video explaining who we are and what our services or like what we offer as services. It's obviously not us personally doing that. We have a, an animated video of it, but that's fine. That's okay because that's that's talking about an in, intangible type of thing. If you're actually talking about a specific service that you have, um, where you need to see someone demonstrate something, um, it's better to have you guys do the demonstration. Okay. So we're running short on time here. Again, if you guys have any other questions, these are. Great, great questions. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, if you have any other questions, you want to go a little further uh, in depth on them, give us a call again, 800-462-8749. Um, contact us at imatrix.com. Um, we might possibly have a survey going out, so feel free to go ahead and uh, fill that out. But again, I want to thank everyone for attending. You guys have been great, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.